BMW on call. Good day. Yeah, hello. Hi, sir. How can I help? Yeah, I've got a bit of a problem. Okay. Yeah, my car won't start. Have you tried plugging it out and back in again? Hey, but you've got a charger cable for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Samsung iPhone? Nah. BMW. Now, this is, of course, what we were scared of when it came to electric vehicles. Where are we going to battle with the same sort of issues that we battle with modern technology, PCs, printers and the likes? Now, electric vehicles haven't offered us much in the way of range. Their batteries never getting us much further than just to the shops or to work and back and needing a charge on a regular basis. Hybrid vehicles have broached this topic now by including a bit of a petrol motor that either powers the wheels or charges the batteries. The i3 is a full electric vehicle and it's available in two models, the standard model and the model that we have here, the range extender. Now the range extender has a small petrol motor but it doesn't power the wheels, it just provides charge for the battery, it's a small 650cc two cylinder motor and as such it's got a very small carbon footprint and it satisfies those emissions regulations that are all too stringent. Now this bumps the standard range from 150 kilometers up to just shy of 300 kilometers. And while it sounds relatively short, as long as you've got some fuel in the relatively small 9 litre fuel tank, you'll be able to drive that petrol charging up the batteries and keeping you going. The full electric nature of the i3 does make it feel a bit like a big golf cart. As soon as you depress the accelerator, you get this instantaneous torque. When you come off the accelerator, two things happen, at least in the i3 it does. Firstly, it regenerates power. It does the same when you apply the brakes. Now this is going to help charge the batteries and extend your range a little bit. The second thing that happens is it creates a little bit of engine braking. Now BMW fortunately had the presence of mind to activate the brake lights as soon as this happens and most drivers find that they end up using that engine braking more than they use the brakes. It's actually quite aggressive and in stop-start traffic it's actually pretty good. You don't have to worry about keeping up with traffic either. The electric motor puts out 125 kilowatts and believe it or not that'll get the i3 to 100 kilometers an hour from a standstill in just under 8 seconds. It's going to top out at 150 kilometers an hour but you don't really need to do more than that and trust me that is more than enough in this car. Then we get to the styling and if I have to be honest I'm not a massive fan of it. Very seldom what you see at a motor show in terms of a concept makes it into the final draft and it's very much the case here. They haven't carried over the nice lines that we saw when the concept was first revealed. Now because of the compact drivetrain in that, BMW could have just created a little pod on top of some wheels here. But too radical a departure from what we're used to wouldn't sell. So they've included a little bit of a bonnet and all the traditional cues and lines that you're accustomed to in a small city car. It's not to say that it's not practical though. It's got these full-size doors up front and then you've got these clamshell suicide doors at the rear. And that's now devoid of a B pillar, which makes getting in and out actually quite easy. It's fairly spacious inside as well too. It's bigger than a Mini, but it is smaller than a 3 Series. My niggle though, comes down to these wheels. Standard, nice big 19 inch wheels. But at the rear, 175 section. At the front, 155 section. Those are thin Mari biscuit tires. Naturally this is done to reduce rolling resistance, but the last time I commuted on something with tyres that thin, I had to pedal. Now the interior is also a very interesting place. BMW has endeavoured to use as much eco-friendly material in the construction as possible just to keep it a little more green, also to keep it light. So you've got items like this wood over here, which is actually eucalyptus wood. Now eucalyptus trees grow considerably faster than normal trees and it also needs 90% less finishing. This material that you see on the dashboard and over here on the doors looks very recycled but it's a product called Kenef and it's a compressed plant fiber. Now Kenef when it grows produces above average levels of oxygen. It's also 30% lighter than the petroleum based products or plastics that are used in car interiors. The wool is as BMW puts it responsibly sourced and the leather is tanned using olive tree leaf. It's all very green, very friendly. But you do get the suspicion that the guy that designed this likes spending his weekends in forests, naked, with other naked people. 
But does this make the i3 a bad car? No, not at all. It is a little pricey at just over 600,000 Rand for the Rex version. What it does is it gives us a glimpse of the future where we're all going to commute in relative silence with just a little bit of air rushing from the vents. What it's going to do is it's going to make petrol special again. Petrol is going to be reserved for weekends, for those that can afford to burn it. It's going to make petrol an occasion again. When the petrol motors come out, we're all going to prick up our ears for the sights, the sounds, the smells. The electric car is going to make petrol an occasion.